Let's go to Mike Lynch right now. He has the warning for the counties. Go ahead, Mike. Yes, Steve. The Weather Service now has officially issued a tornado warning effective until 530 for the people in the following counties of eastern Hennepin. That would include the northern suburbs of Minneapolis, southern Anoka, the Maplewood area, and the Fridley area, and also northern Ramsey County. Uh, at 450, and as we've been reporting through Dean Spratt and other folks, uh, law enforcement personnel have reported to, uh, a tornado on the ground in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, and this tornado is apparently moving towards the east-northeast at about uh, 20 to 30 miles an hour. And, of course, if you're in that area, you might want to take cover. Again, the path that this tornado would take at the present time would bring it through the Blaine area, the Lexington area, Mounds View, Shoreview, some of the northern suburbs of St. Paul, and possibly the Lionel Lakes and Centerville area. If you're in any of those cities in southern Anoka County or northern Ramsey County, you want to take cover. This tornado has been confirmed on the ground, at least in places, and it's continuing to move towards the east-northeast. steve -O? Okay, it is now 5 o'clock here at CCO. It is 91 degrees. We're going to have a tornado warning now from the Weather Bureau, I think. No, we are not. But you yeah. got the tornado warning from Michael Lynch. And uh, you hang in there now to CCO. And we'll be filling you in on what's going on here as we go to our newscast with Dick Chapman here at CCO Radio. WCCO Radio's 5 o'clock news, this is Dick Chapman. The people to be concerned right now are people in Fridley, Spring Lake Park, Moundsview. The National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning, effective until 5.30, for people in east-central Minnesota, including eastern Hennepin, southern Anoka, and Ramsey County. About 15, 10 minutes ago, law enforcement personnel reported a tornado out on the ground in Brooklyn Center. The direction of the funnel was towards Fridley, Spring Lake Park, Mounds view. If you're in the path of the tornado, go to a safe area. It's one and a half minutes past five. This is the real thing. Take cover. This has been Bill Togstead reporting live from the National Weather Service office in the Twin Cities. That was live from the National Weather Service. There is a tornado in the vicinity of Fridley, Spring Lake Park, Mounds view having touched the ground in Brooklyn Center about 12 minutes ago. Everybody in that area, be concerned and look for cover. We have no reports of any injuries or damage, but it just occurred 12 minutes ago. Again, the National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning effective until 5.30 for people in the following counties, eastern Hennepin, southern Naoka, and Ramsey County. The touchdown was about 4.50 this afternoon, in Brooklyn Center, apparently in the vicinity of 85th and Zane, just north of 694 in Brooklyn Center. It was visible in the air after the touchdown by several law enforcement agencies, uh, several law enforcement personnel who said the funnel was aloft, but apparently had touched down prior to that. Rich Holter has come into our CCO newsroom from the News Bureau and has some more details. Well, Dick, I think uh, on our line 7900 there, I think we have Dave Christensen from the Traffic Management Center. And uh, Dave, are you with us? Yes. This is Dave Christensen. Got it. Go ahead. This is Dave Christensen yes. in the Traffic Management Center. What, what are you describing? Uh, what are you seeing right now, Dave? Right now I'm seeing a light-colored funnel that's waving and swerving all over. And it isn't dark-colored. So previously, for about 10 minutes, it had been really dark. And it's just swirling all over. Can you try to locate that funnel exactly for us right now? You said it was on the ground for quite a period of time. For about 10 minutes. Uh, and... Okay, there it's dark. It hit the ground. There's a big black puff. And it's, uh, so it's making contact with the ground once again. It's in northern suburbs. If, if I try to find out exactly where I'm at here, I'll probably, I might lose it again. Okay, but we had the, the first reports of this tornado. We're in Brooklyn Center in the vicinity of 85th and Zane. And I'm not sure exa the exact I direction. I I'm not sure either here. But of course... Uh, it's, to... That it's not on the ground right now because it's light colored. Right which means there's no debris in it at the moment. That's right. It isn't black. Okay, so it was really black at first. It apparently is skipping. Yeah. And it's still light. And from the area that we're talking about here, we have people out in front of that tornado. It would be in the Fridley area, Columbia Heights area possibly, uh, Mounds View, and uh, Arden Hills. 
and I'm not sure exactly of the direction the tornado's going, but anybody in those areas should take a cover immediately because the tornado warning is in effect for the metropolitan Twin Cities. And this one, Rich, came out of nowhere. We were watching radar all afternoon. The big stuff was up by St. Cloud and a little bit north of the cities, and all of a sudden, right in the suburbs, boom, one blossom. Seems to have developed right there. Okay. And it's still light-colored. Still light-colored. The funnel is still clearly visible. Yes, it is. And it's aloft. Yeah, well, it's down near the ground, very near the ground. It's below the tree level, but it's light-colored. Okay. And it's swirling all over. It's taking... It's, it's, it's yeah, would you stay with us, please? Yes. Uh, since you've got it in sight. Yes. And once... You're not in danger okay, yourself, Okay, wait a minute. Right? Now, there's, a, there's a water tower I can see. A water tower? Okay. By, by water tower, what do you mean? Uh, it says... Uh, I'm trying to read it. It's a, it's a water tower with about uh, 10 descending beam, uh, beams. Okay. Now, I was busy on another phone when you were describing the location. Yes. Could you describe it again for me one time? It's, it's in the vicinity of 100 and 694, uh, perhaps uh, uh, north of that. Okay. What would, is there any water around there? Uh, uh, would it be light be colored because it's picking up water rather than debris? Oh, I, I, that's conceivable. It's light colored. Well, originally, it originally was jet black. Uh huh. And you're still watching it? Yes. And it still seems to be touching uh, close to ground. And this water tower is right in line with it from uptown okay. uh, Minneapolis here. I'm I'm here in Mi uptown Minneapolis, but I have this video camera that I'm looking at it with. It's turned black. Curiously, downtown Minneapolis has sunshine right now, but our lights just dimmed. <laughs> yes. Uh, right. It did here too. Yeah. You're not in any danger, are you? No. No, no. Okay. I'm, I'm over here about two blocks from the Lemington Hotel. Right, and that thing, that thing is on the ground again. Well, Dick, if it is in the vicinity of uh, Highway 106, 94, 94, uh, and, yes. we, and if it is moving to the east or northeast, that would, of course, put it uh, immediately into the Fridley area. Uh, people in the northern part of Columbia Heights should be concerned and should be taking cover right now. And, of course, further down the line to the east or northeast is Arden Hills and Moundsview. So people in those areas uh, should be immediately concerned about this tornado that is on the ground in the northern Twin Cities suburbs. The report we have is that the touchdown occurred, and our gentleman on the line now is still saying it's close to the ground, but there was some air, aerial vi uh, visage of some damage on the ground by some airline pilots. The touchdown was a, apparently a happened at 4.50, about uh, 17 minutes ago. Mike Lynch is uh, ready with some more information. Mike? Yes, we're getting more and more reports. The tornado is still on the ground. It's knocking over some power lines and some trees right now in sections of southern Anoka County, and it's moving into Ramsey County. We don't have the exact location of it, but as Rich and uh, others have indicated, it's in the Fridley area, and it is moving uh, somewhere now right along the line between the Ramsey and Anoka County lines, and it's continuing to move towards the east-northeast. It's still, still on the ground, and again, if you're anywhere in the area around Lino Lakes, Blaine, Shoreview, some of the northern St. Paul uh, suburbs, you want to take cover because this tornado is definitely still on the ground and it is moving towards the east northeast got to get in your basement here this is canon because you can see this thing on television it's just boiling out there i've never seen anything like this before yeah this is really a a potentially dangerous situation and it's right light now. colored you usually with tornadoes they're dark color but this one's white and uh it is really moving along it's still on the ground as i said knocking over trees power lines and uh it's moving right along towards the east north it's, east it's dark colored again Dave Christensen, that's you, Dave, right? Yes. And it's it's changing colors. It goes from light color to dark as it picks up debris. Yes. And it's remaining on the ground? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. How far would you say it's moved since you first started talking to us? Oh, maybe five miles. Where would you say it is now? Uh, not very far from where it was originally. Okay. I mean, uh... Still Brooklyn Park, isn't it? In, in, in around that, in, in that neighborhood? It seems like... I, I can see... I got a water tower on the on the camera here, and I can't read the name off the water tower. It can't pick it up. And it's jet black again. Now, you're in the traffic management center. When you say on the camera, you're speaking of uh, the cameras that look down the freeways, right? Yes, that's right. And you, you can't focus that, of course, and you can't pick up the reading on the, on the water tower. Not quite. Okay. But now it's, it's jet black again. It, it, it's really digging in. This is really interesting. You're using the traffic control cameras to follow a tornado funnel. Dick, yes, Dick. I've, got, I've got all the whole thing on tape, too. All right. The main thing is people in Fridley, Spring Lake Park, Moundsview, yeah. in that section of the, the north uh, Minneapolis suburbs, should take cover right now. Oh, I we don't have see a tornado funnel could... on the ground at the moment. And uh, everybody should get in the basement, get off the highways, get into safe uh, cover somewhere. Fridley, Spring Lake Park, Moundsview, uh, Columbia, Columbia Heights, uh, those places. 
And uh, Dave says it's uh, he's still watching it with a with a traffic management center camera along the 694 freeway north of uh, the Twin Cities. And Dave, once again, you're saying it's uh, in the vicinity of the river in 694. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, it's it's lifting a little bit right now. It's uh, still close to the ground, and it's now it's back down again. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, it's it, it just hopped a little bit, but it's back down in the ground again. All right, Dean Spratt has something. Quickly, Dean. Okay, Dick, uh, it would appear that it's very possible we have more than one tornado because while Dave uh, from the Traffic Management Center is talking about a tornado that he's watching in the area of 694 and 100, we're also getting reports of a tornado that is very visible on 35W between 694 and Highway 96. Now, that's more up toward that Moundsview area that we've been talking about. I have an aircraft report that they have sighted multiple funnels in the air, so we could very well be talking about. There's also a stationary funnel being reported right now one mile due east of the Anoka County Airport, and that is being observed by an aircraft at this time. I think, uh, I think Dean, that uh, that's something we should emphasize in this situation. We may be looking at uh, more than one funnel. Exactly. That often right. happens in this situation because we have, uh, we have a woman on one of our lines uh, standing by, I believe, on, uh, uh, that's in New Brighton. And are you with us? Hello. Hello. Yeah, this this uh, is a fellow at uh, Osborne University at Bob's Produce Ranch. He's looking at the funnel. And your name, sir? Bob Schroer. We're watching it right now. It's about 79th and uh, in Main Street. A real, real big funnel right now. I don't know how long we'll be able to stay on the line here because it looks like it's coming right at us. 79th and Main. Uh, you think that's the same funnel we were talking this is about? This Ridley now. That's a. Uh, you think that's the same funnel we were talking about earlier up by uh, North of 694? I believe it is. Yes. I, I swung the cameras around, and that's the only one I can spot. Yeah, it's really. Now it's dissipated, but now it's it's hitting something now because there's a lot of stuff in the air. And it's coming toward you, sir. It's coming kind of south, uh, be uh, southeast of us here now, coming from the northwest. Right now, I'd say it's on 79th and uh, Main for sure. Okay, we got another report here, Dave. That that tornado is on west of Highway 65 and Fridley. Oh. You guys, hang on. Okay. Stay on the air with us. West of Highway 65. 65 and Fridley. West of Highway 65 yep, and we Fridley. Are. And it seems to have slowed down. It's almost uh -oh, a creep uh -oh. right there. All right, we're all looking at one funnel now. We right. got that straight, right? Yep, I that's right. So. I think there's only one funnel. Yep. And that's the way it looks. That's all we can see right now. Well, right. Dick, I think we should emphasize here that while there may be one funnel, this kind of a system has the capability of producing a lot of funnels. And anybody in southern Anoka County, south central Anoka County, northern Ramsey County, or northern Washington County should be taking cover immediately. And we're looking at some new... Um... Now the wind is really blowing here. All right, you uh, take care of yourself, Bob. Uh, yeah. you're, you're, you got a place to go in yeah, case we're it comes all in, in? We got we got customers in the coolers, and all our help is in the coolers. People right. in mobile homes should be especially careful now oh, to take cover. Boy. Mobile homes especially, because homes, uh, reg regular stationary homes would supply some uh, protection, but mobile homes... Just like airplanes. you got to take cover somewhere now if you're... Uh, West of Highway 65 in Fridley where, is where it is right now. It's, it's, li it's Right now it's about a block west of University Avenue on about 78. Still touching the ground? Yes. A lot of debris in the, in the air. All right. We also see another uh, radar signal north, right on the Anoka, northern Anoka line, and this may be a new Ooh. disturbance breaking out. But the big stuff is where you guys are looking at. You'd say 79th uh, around in uh, southern Anoka County. Yes. That's okay. About, that's about two and a half miles north of 694. Now the funnel's going way up, but there's still debris. It broke up. Uh, I'm back on the phone. Is this Dave? Yes. Okay, Dave. What, what do you see now? Uh, well, it's split into two parts. It looked like... Uh, uh, it doesn't seem like there's much material in it now, uh, but it, it varies a lot. Uh, I was just talking to someone else uh, that had seen it and was calling in. Now we have a third person watching the funnel. This person is a lady from New Brighton. Can you tell me where you're located? Um, well, on 18th and Long Lake Road. All right, and you're looking which way? Back west? Um, well, first it's moved from north. It's, it was north, and it's heading east. It's, um, we can see it right from our, first we can see it from our front yard, and it's moved past. Now we can see it from our backyard. And my father just got home. He says it's a, it looks like it's about a mile and a half from here. Okay, that, it broke up. And now it's starting up again. Yes, it, it, it just touched the ground again. Yes, now the sirens are coming. We've got three people looking at it, and if you just keep looking at it and keep trying to tell us roughly where it is, maybe we can save a few lives. It's getting further and further away from uptown Minneapolis. It looks like it's moved a little bit to the north of maybe like on 81st now. 
Okay, 81st and about what? University Avenue. University. Uh, a little bit west of University Avenue. Okay. And, and, and I can't see it now. No, it's dissipated now. How about the lady in New Brighton? Can you see it? Um, we can see it from the backyard. There is a funnel up in the air, but it's... Uh, it's, it's, it's up, going up and down. Oh, there. Okay. It's way up in the air, swirling. Yes. Okay, one... <laughs> we have a report here, Dick, from a woman at Harmar Mall. They can see uh, that tornado funnel pretty good from there, off to uh, the north. It's still visible now, that uh, tornado funnel. Anybody just tuning in, there is a tornado funnel on the ground in the northern suburbs affecting Anoka County, Fridley, Spring Lake Park, Moundsview, New Brighton, Columbia Heights. People in those areas, be prepared to take shelter immediately. The funnel has been on the ground several times for the past 25 minutes. It started at about 10 minutes to 5, and it came out of nowhere. We have three people on the air live looking at the funnel right now. The last we had just a few seconds ago was that it lifted briefly. Can you tell me what it's doing right now? Bob? Right, right now it, it is, it is it's starting to form another funnel, and there is debris blowing in the air. And okay. now it's, it looks like it's going up into the sky, reaching the other funnels. No, not quite. Just touched down. Yeah, it looks like yep, it just there touched. It there it touched down very well. Yeah, it's, it's been going up and down. All right. Apparently, as it picks up debris, it uh, gains form and shape and color, and when it loses debris, it uh, fades a bit. Yes, you can't see it if there's any debris in the air. Dick, it looks like it's really rolling right now. Okay. You don't have any winds or anything in your, in your vicinity right where you are? Just, just light winds right now. Any hail, any rain? No uh, rain, no hail. This is a fluke. It's a strange one. It looks like a smoke flume is what it looks like. There has been some big strokes of lightning uh, to, uh, to the east of it, uh, but not in the last five minutes. Now it looks like it's now, Yeah, now it's gone. Right. Okay. It, is, it is out of sight now, Dick. It's up in the air. It's up in the air, yeah. It's going now. Not but there is a lot of debris still blowing up in the area where it touched down. Now we have sirens. Okay, you people are doing a yeoman's job. Uh, we just want to stay with you to try to keep this thing pinpointed as to roughly where it is. As it moves, as it... Oh, uh, no, it must have hit down again now because there's a lot more debris blowing. Now right. we're getting like some a giant wind. swirl at the top. Okay, you guys hang on. Mike Lynch, come in. Yeah, I just want to come in here briefly and remind people Whoa. that just, just because you can't see the tornado on yeah. the ground, that necessarily doesn't mean that the winds aren't still strong in the area. It just means that there isn't a lot of condensation. You can still have very strong winds, even though you can't it's see the tornado touching the ground. It's still it's still on the ground, and it's still moving towards the east-northeast. It's uh, moving now into the mountains okay. of the New Brighton area. It's on the ground. Right. I can see it. Okay. It, it, you can't see it in between the clouds in the ground, but it was on the ground right. at the bottom. It looks like it's, it's uh, spreading out. It's wider right now than it was previously. Swirl to it now. And now it's going down a little bit. Uh, Dick it, Chapman? Why not? It's practically stationary. It has been for the last three, four minutes. Dale? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Where are you uh, reporting from? I'm from Brooklyn Park, 63rd and Zane. All right, 63rd and Zane. What can you see? And it, it's been a, a funnel, and now the top of the funnel has disappeared, and it's a thin line, and it looks like it's going down. It's got a bow in it, a bow to the southeast. Now it's Dick, swirling it, way down. It's disappeared from my view. Same here. I can't see a thing. Dick, it is moving a little bit further south now towards us, and I may have to jump off here. Okay. That's Bob, right, at 79th yeah. and, uh, er, no, at Bob's Produce. Right, 76th and University. Dick, I got a caller here from 118th and Coon Rapids. He's looking southeast. He sees the huge roll that has passed them in Coon Rapids at 118th. It's past them now. Okay. As he looks southeast, he can still see the big, uh, as he calls it, the big roll in the sky. All right. We're, we're, we're concerned about the funnel primarily. You're still seeing it, Bob. Bob may have uh, run for cover, I think. I've lost it here. We're still seeing it. Okay, this is the lady in uh, New Brighton. Mm -hmm. And your name, ma'am? Lori Birkland. Lori. Okay, stay with us. Uh, Bob, I think, ran for the cellar. Did you get it? Yeah. And Dave can't see it anymore. You're the only people, uh, person that's looking at it. Can you tell me again? You're still looking at it? Yes. Okay. And you'd say it's roughly? We'll get another guy. It, it looks like it's going e It's coming eastward. Right? It's, eastward. it's north of New Brighton. North of New Brighton. And it's moving east. Yeah. 
We've got a report from the state capitol in downtown St. Paul. They're watching it from there, and they say it's unbelievable, but they see it real well, too. Yeah, Moving to the northeast. It just keeps going up and down. Right. And the top, it, it, it looks worse at the top. <laughs> okay. We, we keep looking at it on radar, and, and it's moving very slowly on radar, but the funnel itself is what we're concerned about, the Bob big cell. Person. Bob Person is on uh, this other line. Bob? Yes. Where are you speaking from? Columbia Heights, right on 53rd and 6th, about uh, two and a half miles south of the funnel. Okay. Tell us what you can see. Right now, nothing. She seems to have broken up. There's some good news, the first good news we've had in the past half hour. But uh, one of the... Uh TV helicopters, I probably shouldn't say TV on radio. Well, that's all right. Just flew past it just before she broke up. Okay. Uh, Dick, I've got a woman here that says they've seen a second plume now at 93rd and West River Road. She said they saw the first one go by. They're looking right up at it at 93rd and West River Road. Can you put her on the air or wrong phone? Uh, she's gone. Okay. 93rd and West River Road? Yep. She's, this is the second one. I asked her, I said, did you see the first one? She said, yes, this is definitely a second plume. Yeah, I think that's something that we should emphasize again, Steve, is that uh, while we may be pinpointing the location of one funnel in this system, that it's very possible this, this storm, it appears to be growing in, in, in magnitude. Well, could those easily produce, are awful heavy. Yeah, could easily produce one, two, or three tornadoes. So anybody in, let's repeat again, anybody in northern Ramsey County, anybody in south and south central Anoka County, or in northern Washington County, all of those areas, take cover immediately. A These are northern warning Twin City suburbs. Northern Twin City suburbs are in danger and should be ready to take cover at any time. We don't have any reports, however, yet of any fatalities or any uh, uh, hospital reports, any ambulance pickups. John Lundell said he saw flattened homes. He did. Yes. Where was that? Uh, John Landell is who? He's a traffic uh, helicopter pilot. Where do you see them? Uh, up in the uh, Fridley area between uh, University and West River Road. Yes, it will take some time to get any damage reports and sure. injury reports. But, uh, but uh, that weather is still so heavy up there that it could turn any time. Yeah. That's, of course, our main concern is providing a warning to those people in the path of this storm that they take immediate cover. We're there. talking about Anoka, Ramsey counties, the northern suburbs of the Twin Cities right now are in danger of a tornado funnel which has been on the ground several times for the past half hour and still is visible on our last report, 93rd and West River Road. And this may be a second funnel. And that's, of course, in the Coon Rapids area. That's right. Here's a caller, Dick, who has uh, seen it dissipate into the clouds, the first one uh, right here. Your name, ma'am? Bonnie Pontius. Can hardly hear you, Bonnie. Pontius. Go ahead. Go ahead. What uh, can you tell us? Well, we're on 76th and Lakeside, and the funnel we saw it go down, and then when the Holland gentleman called, it had went up in the sky, and it's like in a black thundercloud okay. overhead. 76th and Lakeside is what suburb? Um, it's what, it's east of Old Central and Central Avenue, right by Spring Lake. Okay, Spring Lake Park. Right. Right in the boundaries of Spring Lake Park and Fridley. And you could no longer see it? No, we've been watching, and it just went up. And when the other gentleman said that he didn't see it, it was just going up then. Okay. Looking further down the road, uh, down the down the map here, places like Stillwater and so forth would be in the way. Uh, but right now, the big activity is in Anoka and northern Ramsey counties, just north of the Minneapolis-St. Paul metro area, those northern suburbs. And we don't have any reports of damage yet, except uh, preliminary reports of some flattened homes spotted by some helicopter pilots. And a few airline pilots have seen damage on the ground. Dick, back in 1965, when the tornado set down, it was in a, in, in a similar uh, neighborhood in Fridley. And two years ago in Moundsview, the tornado set down, too. So the same area is being affected as it was two years ago, and then again back in 1965. Yeah, I wasn't listening, Steve, but uh, thank you. Well, I was I, just saying that uh, the, in 1965, we had that uh, tornado in Fridley. Yes. And uh, that area has been affected and again now. And two years ago, 1984, we had the tornado, 50 people injured, one killed in Moundsview. That was two years ago. It seems to be the same area again. Yes, it's kind of a tornado alley because, uh, well, it's flat up that way. And as you mentioned earlier, people in mobile homes should be very, very uh, careful. I remember people saved their lives in 65 by crawling in the crawl space underneath the mobile homes. If you stay in the mobile home, you're not necessarily safe because mobile homes are just very Dick, I think we're going to go to the weather center and talk to Mike Lynch. Maybe we can get an update on the path of this storm. It appears now to be in, in the eastern, uh, south, 
uh, Eastern Anoka County and moving into Washington County. Is that right, Mike? That's correct, yeah. It seems to be in the Lino Lakes, Blaine area, around Lexington as well. Some of the extreme northern suburbs of St. Paul, Moundsview, Northview, Nor North Oaks, and some of the others. We've had no reports for a while now of the uh, of actual tornado touchdown. It appears to be breaking up, but the main thing to remember, and Rich has also emphasized this, we do have a very heavy band of showers and thunderstorms in southeastern Anoka County. That could produce more tornadoes as it moves towards the east-northeast, so you might want to keep a wary eye out if you live in sections of northern Washington County Hello. and any place of uh, eastern Anoka County. The storm is still quite strong and it's still moving towards the east. What communities uh, seem to be the most directly affected by the system right now? Right Mike? now the system I would say uh, uh, actually all the cities, all the areas around eastern Anoka County, Lino Lakes, Centerville, uh, looks like Columbus Township, Linwood Township up in Anoka County and the storm is also moving, in, moving into sections of Forest Lake in northern Washington County, New Scandia and some of the other cities would uh, take it into the uh, southern area of Chisago County, not too far away right now from uh, Center City in the Lindstrom area. This storm again apparently still moving towards the east-northeast at about uh, 30 miles an hour or so. It is still quite strong and it still could uh, still could produce some more tornadoes. So again, you want to keep an eye out for possible tornado formation and definitely some strong winds, some large hail and some heavy rainfall anywhere over eastern Anoka County, northern Washington County, the Forest Lake, uh, Scandia area, and uh, possibly uh, southern Chicago County as well. Excuse me. Okay, Mike, I think right now we should do this. If you see a tornado approaching, you must take quick action to protect yourself. In your home, stay away from windows. Go to a shelter or to the corner of the basement toward the tornado. Avoid an area of the basement directly below heavy appliances upstairs. Take a battery-operated radio and flashlight with you. If you have no basement, crawl under heavy furniture in the center of your house. In your mobile home, go to a designated shelter area. In your car, drive away from the tornado at right angles. If caught outdoors, get into a ditch. Stay away from overhead wires. Stay tuned to WCCO Radio. We should run over some of those communities again, Dick. Uh, the storm uh, now affecting communities like North Oaks and Moundsview, Lino Lake, Centerville, and in the Washington County area, Forest Lake and Scandia. And this is a tornado warning, we once again emphasize. So anybody in those areas, northern Washington County, southeastern Anoka County, and even the southern part of Chisago County should take cover immediately. A tornado warning is now in effect. If you have just joined us, a tornado funnel has been on the ground in the past half hour Anywhere from uh, Brooklyn Center through portions of Columbia, Columbia Heights, Fridley, Spring Lake Park, Moundsview. We do know there is some damage. We don't know how severe. We don't know of any injuries or any fatalities. But uh, as recently as five to seven minutes ago, the funnel was visible. We're waiting for any more people who actually have it in sight. At that time, uh, five or seven minutes ago, people were watching it dissipate and lift back into the sky. This, this warning also includes people in the White Bear Lake area, Dick. We should That's throw right. that in northern Ramsey County, so they're not clear yet either. On radar, we could see the pulsations of the cell itself. We cannot see a funnel. That's required by visual on-the-ground spotting, and we had several concerned citizens who did a yeoman job of spotting the funnel itself and telling us which direction it was going, when it was touching down, when it was lifting, and so forth. Uh, Dick, uh, I just uh, talked to a listener uh, in Coon Rapids. Have you been mentioning anything about yes. Coon Rapids? Yes, okay. 93rd she said West River Road. It, all right, this one, she said, is uh, uh, bobbing up and down above her house, uh, Old Highway 10, Coon Rapids Boulevard, and about 100th. Is that uh, That would be about, about right. But not touching the ground, right? Not touching the ground, but looking like it wants to. Okay, it could. Again, apparently this thing is producing more than one cell, Dick. I think we have two funnels now. Yeah. Uh, the first one that didn't, what looked like the damage as it changed colors, was a little bit further to the south and west, but uh, the one at 93rd and West River Road and the one that uh, Denny just speak, spoke of seems to be a second funnel. Dick? So, yes? Uh, I had a, a listener call me. He says they're right in the thick of this thing. He wanted to know whether he should keep his windows closed or open in his house. Now, I asked uh, Kurt Beckman. He said things are changing and uh, their attitude towards that. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> well, of course, that, of course, is to minimize damage. Do you keep it closed or do you keep it open to, to equalize the pressure? Yes. Uh, the old thing was that you left it open a crack uh -huh. to equalize the bit, pressure. Yes. Now, again, that's being they're looking upon that in a different light now. And but this somebody, gentleman is right in the midst of this thing, yes. and he wants some information. So well, go, I go to the basement. Crack. It has forget to do the with windows. <laughs> yeah, it forget the do, windows. It has to do with a vacuum thing. If the funnel is right over your house, it could... It could Equalize the pressure inside the house, but this, if it's that close, I'd be in the basement. Right. Well, he may have called windows. me from the basement. I don't know. Okay. I wouldn't go back up to mess with the windows. I don't go windows. back upstairs on a case like this. 
People in the northern suburbs, Anoka County, Ramsey County, Washington County, even as far as Stillwater, there is severe weather heading that direction, and we do know that there's at least one and perhaps probably two funnels, one of which has touched the ground several times already in the past 45 minutes. This is WCCO Radio, Minneapolis-St. Paul. It's 5.30. If you see a tornado approaching, you must take quick action to protect yourself. In your home, stay away from windows. Go to a shelter or to the corner of the basement toward the tornado. Avoid an area of the basement directly below heavy appliances upstairs. Take a battery-operated radio and flashlight with you. If you have no basement, crawl under heavy furniture in the center of your house. In your mobile home, go to a designated shelter area. In your car, drive away from the tornado at right angles. If caught outdoors, get into a ditch. Stay away from overhead wires. Stay tuned to WCCO Radio. We have a listener on the air, Todd Christensen. Todd, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Boy, I can hardly hear you. Speak up as best you can. Todd Christensen calling from Coon Rapids. Um, I can't really hear you now too well at all either. Okay, tell me what happened to you. I was driving home from work probably about 10 minutes ago down East River Road going north. Yes. On 85th, and the, and the cloud went right over my head. It lifted up my car and threw me off the road, went, and I collided into a tree, and a van right in front of me, a Northwestern Bell van in front of me, rolled across the road sideways, and it ended up laying in the middle of the road. And uh, at that time, I just kept going through a red light, and I uh, was watching the guys. They seemed to be okay in the van. And then it bounced over East River Road right behind some buildings and just kept going towards Northtown. How long ago was that, sir? This was within the last 10 minutes. And are you okay? Yes, I am. Little... Uh a little nervous. How about your car? My car's okay. And how about the van? The van was pretty wiped out. The Did van, you... it was all smashed up. It, it rolled over once. Just rolled it off the road? Rolled it right off the road. It lifted mine up off the road and threw me on, into a tree sideways. And say again where you were, 85th and... 85th and East River Road in Coon Rapids. Okay. Well, thank you for the information. I'm glad you're okay, and I hope your car's okay. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> okay, Todd. Thanks, thanks a lot. Here's Mike Lynch again. Mike? Well, this pretty much echoes reports we've had already. Some funnel reports around the uh, Coon Rapids area. Another report of a funnel around the Rosedale uh, Shopping Center area. Uh, these showers and thunderstorms again moving towards the east-northeast. Want to emphasize that this uh, cell could produce some more tornadoes, or at least one tornado. It's moving towards the east-northeast, affecting northern Washington County, southern Chisago County, and eastern Anoka County. And you just want to take cover if you're in those areas, because this thing could produce more tornadoes. Mike, uh, might I ask a question? Yeah. Have you been watching this thing uh, close enough to know about the, the pulsing, uh, the situation with regard to the strength of the storm? Uh, That's right. Well, a lot of that has to do on the radar picture with the raising and the lowering of the radar antenna, and that appears to make it pulse. But uh, you're right, these storms do have a tendency to pulse. In fact, uh, in the case of uh, severe thunderstorms, which we have right now, they go in cycles of about 20 minutes to a half hour where they pulse up and then where, where they settle down and then they pulse up again. So just because the storm appears to be settling down at one time, another 15 or 20 minutes later, it could really uh, generate up again and and possibly produce some more uh, funnel clouds and possibly and, uh, tornadoes. It would also appear, looking at the radar, that the Chisago County is now being Absolutely. More, more involved than it was a, a little while ago. That's why I wanted to mention Center City, Lindstrom area. You want to take cover also if you're in the uh, southern Chisago County area. Now, we want to mention, too, we're watching for tornadoes, but there's also a very good potential here of some very large hail, over three-quarters of an inch, more than golf ball size hail, and heavy lightning. rain, certainly, and uh, lightning and heavy rainfall, locally heavy rainfall, and possibly some localized flooding. Well, the two heavy cells were watching are just north of the cities, uh, basically Anoka, Ramsey, and uh, towards uh, uh, Washington. Washington County and That's right. Washington County. But then I look and I see some smaller but pulsing items uh, a little bit further north, uh, west of, or east of St. Cloud and uh, further north of the cities. Yeah, right. We don't know of anything happening up there yet. No, they've been there pretty much all afternoon. I think the biggest danger up towards the St. Cloud area, that particular area of storms from the Twin Cities north to around St. Cloud are some locally heavy rains. We've had no reports of any severe weather in that area except for some localized flooding. These rains up uh, in that area especially are moving very slowly and they sit over an area for a long period of time and can cause a lot of problems with some localized flooding. We don't want to forget the people up there. Yeah, I've got a a caller that called me and said that at this moment in Coon Rapids, 
at uh, Coon Rabbits and Egret Boulevard. Uh, pea-sized hail now, and it's windy. Yeah. They saw the uh, funnel, but it's past them by now, or funnels. Yeah. But right now it's dark there, windy, pea-sized hail on Coon Rapids and Egret Boulevard. Now, that appears to be at the tail end of the thunderstorms, but here's the thing you want to remember generically with these things. Tornadoes usually appear on the rear side of these thunderstorms, so just because it looks like things may be clearing off towards your west, it doesn't necessarily mean you're out of the danger, as tornadoes have a tendency to uh, form on the uh, southwest or the rear end of the storm as it uh, moves along towards the east. Mike? Yes. Uh, this is Denny. I just received a listener call. Uh, a person who lives on 89th and about Highway 65 in Blaine that said he said he saw one pass through. Yeah. And he said he's seeing what he thinks is another one uh, dropping down again. Is Very that likely. Yeah. This All cell right. is still strong. It could still produce some more tornadoes. And you just want to take cover if you're in any portion of eastern Anoka County, Centerville, Lino Lakes, northern Washington County, the Forest Lake, even the Stillwater area, and southern Chisago County around Center City and Lindstrom. You and want to people, take cover. And people in Fridley and Moundsview and Arden Absolutely. Hills. And all Absolutely. those communities that, that may be getting sunny in should be equally uh, on guard. And uh, probably needless to say, we still have a tornado warning out for northern Ramsey County, sections of eastern Anoka County, and northern Washington County. That's in effect until 550. That's another 20 minutes or 15 minutes from That's now. That's correct. And, of course, that may be extended as the situation demands. Yes. Uh, again, uh, forest... Uh, uh, Forest Lake, Scandia Forest area a included. White Bear Lake's a possibility. Lino Lakes and Lindstrom, Center right. City. Right. Uh, Hang on, we have, North a Ram- Oaks. we have a Ramsey County Commissioner on the line. Hello, sir. Yes. Yes, uh, who's this? This is Dwayne McCarty. I'm Ramsey County Commissioner for District 1. I am a resident of Moundsview. Go ahead. Uh, I live just about a mile or three quarters of a mile south of the Anoka County Airport on Long Lake Road. And about 10 minutes ago, I did observe a f- uh, funnel cloud pass over. It was not on the ground and it was moving to the northeast. I have been in contact with Bill Conters from our Emergency Services Center for Ramsey County, and Bill has informed me that our volunteers are in place, the radios are being manned, and we have men throughout the county who are are keeping watch, and they will keep us informed as things develop. The northern part of uh, Moundsview right now, there is a lot of weather activity. Uh, I do not see anything at this time in in the form of a funnel cloud. We do have lightning, we do have thunder, and some uh, low-hanging clouds that are moving through very slowly. Uh, Bill Connor's report to me as of about two minutes ago was that there is no damage in northern Ramsey County at this time that we are aware of. We have no injuries in our section of, of this uh, weather system. And you spoke to him how recently? About five minutes ago. Okay. Very good. Thank you for the report, sir. If anything comes up, I'll keep you posted. You betcha. Thank you. Something we may indicate, Dick, here is that we're, we're, we are concerned about the damage that has been done, and Jan Urock is on her way to the scene, uh, along with Bruce Hagevic, the WCC radio van, but our main concern right now is saving lives as the storm continues to move through the metropolitan area. And so we'll, we'll worry about the damage later. Right now we're, we're, we're worried and we're concerned about where the storm is and where it's going. All right, we have a gentleman named Mike at the intersection of Highway 65 and 99th in Blaine. Mike, what can you see? Well, right now it's raining uh, really pretty hard, and it's just starting to hail. There was a funnel cloud, white funnel cloud that had formed, and now it's dissipated. And now it's just raining awful hard, and there's no breeze. How, how long ago did you see the funnel cloud? Oh, uh, about 30 seconds. Now it's dissipated. Well, uh, all right, but hang on just for a minute. Uh, keep your eyes on that uh, area where you saw the, the dissipated cloud because sometimes they are there. They're not visible unless they've got debris in them or something in them. So just keep watching for a while. You have nothing but rain and uh, kind of calmness right at the moment, huh? That's calm. It's raining real hard. There's small hail, and that's it. 99th and Highway 65 in right. Blaine. In east, the east side of 99th and Highway 65. And that's where you saw the funnel briefly. Right. But was it touching the ground or just a lot? No, it was way up. Way up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Seemed to be moving to the east. Mike Lynch? Yes. Are you listening to this gentleman? Yes, I am. Okay, go ahead. Okay, and I have some more reports here. I just talked to the National Weather Service, and they're reporting from their Doppler radar uh, that there could be some more activity developing a little bit west of the main area right now in eastern or extreme eastern or northeastern Hennepin County around the Brooklyn Park Osseo area. There could be a second wave of uh, shower and thunderstorm activity. We're still watching that, but again, most of the activity appears to be in extreme northern Ramsey County, some of the northern suburbs of St. Paul, eastern Anoka County, northern Washington County. It's progressing towards the east, and in the next half hour or so, it'll pretty much move... uh, throughout the entire uh, uh, entire eastern side of Anoka County. It should move through most of uh, Washington County and through most of southern Chisago County. And it won't be for, uh, too long before it starts moving into sections of Polk County of Wisconsin and, and northern St. Croix County of Wisconsin as well. This is highly dangerous because in downtown Minneapolis, there's no rain, no clouds. Uh, well, there might be a few clouds, but sunshine has been in, around. Uh, 
no wind, uh, so very nearby is some severe turbulent weather. That's right. Another I can thing... picture somebody sitting on a lake fishing and not believing this is happening. It if they is. don't have uh, uh, contact with uh, WCCO or some other kind of uh, warning device. Now, here's another good general tip to remember with these uh, thunderstorms as they pass through. As I mentioned earlier, tornadoes tend to form on the rear end of the storm. Not all, all the time, but some of the time. And many times they're associated with a large area or with an area of large hail. So if you're in an area of large hail, there's a very good possibility that if there is a tornado around, it could be close by and it could be in your immediate area. Here's a gentleman. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Hello? Hello? Yes, you're looking at something new developing? Yes, it just went back up into the sky, but here's, I see another one forming. I, th this is a total of three I've seen. Where are you now? I'm in Coon Rapids. Okay. Were you uh, with us a short time ago? No, I wasn't. Okay. Where in Coon Rapids? Foley Boulevard and Highway 10. Foley and Highway 10. Yes. And quickly describe what you're looking at. I'm looking directly south, and I see a funnel coming down. Oh, I don't know. It's about... I... There's no way I can, ca I can guess... But it's... Um, it's over the river. Hey, look at that. Do you see that up there? I'm sorry. I'm okay, go ahead. There's multiple ones forming. They're just forming, and then a few of them are dissipating. Now, you're talking about fun funnels now, not, not billowy clouds. No, funnels. They're genuine funnels. Yes. And none of them are touching the ground yet. Not yet. Okay, well, would you just uh, stick with us and keep your eyes on them? Briefly? I sure will. Okay. Reminiscent of what we had in 67 and 65, Dick. Oh, yeah, and there were multiple funnels in that one, but it was uh, later in the evening. We're talking to a lady at Foley and Highway 10 in Coon Rapids, looking at funnels aloft which are not touching the ground. Like people on the, in the back side of the system. That's right. People in the northern yeah, suburbs. There's some clouds coming down. It hasn't formed yet, but it's coming down rapidly. You falling mean down. You're talking about a twister now, a funnel-type cloud. Yes. As it comes down, please keep your eyes on it. Well, this is, uh, this is a good indication, Dick, that the people uh, that are behind what appears to be the main part of the storm, and I'm now talking about people in Blaine and, and Coon Rapids and uh, Moundsview and Fridley, uh, should not relax at this point because the system is still with us and it has the capability of producing some very damaging storms to the rear of what appears to be the main storm. So all of those people in those areas, North Oaks, Moundsview, Lino Lakes, uh, as far away as Forest Lake, Scandia, uh, Stillwater, Center City, and Lindstrom. All of these people are in the path of what could be a very dangerous uh, a storm system that uh, apparently has produced already more than one funnel cloud. Many clouds aloft and several on the ground. You're still looking, ma'am? Yes, I am. At Foley and Highway 10. And uh -huh. what's happening right now? It's starting to dissipate a little bit, but there's, Hi, it, is, it is still there. Yeah, okay. It is still there. All right. All right, stay with us. Here's a gentleman named Everett. Where are you speaking from? Hello. Yes. Yeah, I was watching the uh, onset of that storm and so forth initially from uh, some time it hit out in the look like the Brooklyn Park area. All right. Now the clouds are coming right over the top of us right now in six, 169, and they're literally butting up against clear sky to, at Minneapolis and circling. I'm watching the clouds literally go in circles right south of me here. 169 and what? Well, I'm at 109th and 169. And what suburb is that? Now, well, that would be the very northern part of Brooklyn Park, okay. almost to Champlin. Now, this is the new area we're talking about, not right. the stuff that and was you, earlier. You know, I'm watching the clouds literally go over the top of me. I look over my shoulder to the west, and it's clear and bright, and I can see what's left over from the cells going east. But right over the top of me, the clouds are heading directly south. It looks like they butt almost up to Minneapolis, and they circle right around and go east. But you don't see any funnel clouds at the moment. No, it's uh, changing colors from light to dark, but I, I've been watching uh, darkness come, kind of drop out of the lower half of it, but it doesn't seem to form anything. But it's literally literally making a big circle right over Brooklyn Park, Crystal, North Minneapolis area. Thank you, sir, very much. Okay. Yes, we, we must, uh, must emphasize that uh, we, are, we have no eyes at this moment, and, and our listeners uh, and the people that are calling us are our eyes, and while they're not weather experts, they certainly can uh, give us a location in this. We can better plot this storm's course. Do we still have the lady at Foley and Highway 10? Yes. Yeah, and what are you seeing right now? They're starting to dissipate. Yeah. We've got a, I don't know, a lot of wispies coming down. I don't, I don't know what they are. A lot of what? Wispies? Yeah, dark wispies. Okay. Clouds coming down, so. But the funnel clouds you were watching earlier, are they no longer visible? No, they aren't. First good news we've had this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, really? Thank you very much. You're welcome. 
All right, Dick, we okay. still have a tornado warning in effect. We're going to go to Mike Lynch back at the WCCO Weather Center. Mike? Now, as we've been saying, uh, the activity now appears to be moving into southern Chisago, uh, northern Ramsey, or northern uh, Washington County. It's still in northern Ramsey County and eastern Anoka County. But I want to emphasize there appears to be a pretty strong band of showers and thunderstorms forming from uh, eastern Anoka County all the way back to extreme uh, northeastern sections of Hennepin County around the Brooklyn Park, Osseo, and Brooklyn Center area. This appears to be strengthening, and as it moves towards the east-northeast, there's to still could be some severe weather problems in sections of the northeastern part of Hennepin County. Again, the Brooklyn Center, Brooklyn Park, and Osseo area, possibly the Fridley Coon Rapids area, and then on into uh, sections of southeastern uh, Noka County, where most of the activity appears to be right now, along with uh, northern Ramsey and uh, northern Washington counties. It appears the system is spreading out quite uh, That's right. quite over a, a wide area, yeah. but still remains fairly strong over the entire front of the, the system. That's right. It's, it's still in the process of generating and uh, degenerating, and we're just going to have to watch it here over the next uh, couple of hours and uh, see how it uh, continues to move towards the northeast. Now, one thing that I'm concerned with, too, uh, we're watching for the tornadoes, but uh, this area of rain is moving fairly slowly, and so we could have some problems with some locally heavy rainfalls and possibly some uh, urbanized or, or urban flooding here and there. Low-lying areas. Right, low-lying areas, yeah. Because what the bothers me, area. Mike, is that the, it doesn't seem to be moving fast. It's, that's it's right, just exactly. It's developing and staying moving, in the same area. And that's causing the locally heavy rains. Yeah. yeah, usually, you know, you get 30, 40 mile an hour movement on these things. And that's uh, what's unusual about them. And it came out of nowhere, right? That's uh, right. It just, it formed practically right over the top of northern Hennepin County and southern Anoka County, and it just blossomed, and we got our first reports of tornado touchdowns around 450 in the uh, Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn uh, Center area. Yeah, it certainly didn't give us any warning. No. About the time we got the first report of a touchdown is when the first time we could see it on radar. That's right, exactly. And we definitely did see a hook echo on the radar picture, and we're still looking for more of them. Let's do a little speculating here, Mike. We're now four minutes away from the time that this tornado warning is supposed to expire. I, I rather doubt it will. I I don't think it will either. I think probably what will happen is I would imagine that uh, possibly even northern uh, Ramsey County, but for sure southeastern Anoka County, northern uh, Washington County, and possibly even southern southern Chisago County would be put in at least a severe thunderstorm warning or tornado warning. Uh, we're still looking at severe weather in that area. It's moving towards the northeast, and it looks like in the next half hour to 45 minutes, it'll uh, move pretty much uh, across the rest of eastern Anoka County, northern Ramsey County, and across northern northern Washington County as well, through Chisago County, and then probably before too long we'll see some of this activity cut across sections of northern St. Croix County of Wisconsin and uh, Polk County of Wisconsin. We right. have an observer right now in White Bear Lake, uh, uh, someone named Chris. Uh, Chris, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. And uh, where are you, downtown White Bear downtown Lake? Downtown White Bear, yeah, right in front of the Coast to Coast store on 4th Street. Highway 61 and 4th Street? Highway 61 and 4th Street, What right. can you see? Well, a while ago we had some clouds swirling pretty good. It looks like, they're, well, we see them right now. It looks like they're trying to form something up there, but it hasn't come down yet. Mm. And it just, all of a sudden, it just got real windy here, and it got real cold. Temperature dropped. Yeah. Temperature dropped pretty Which good. We got the, the clouds right above us. They're just swirling like crazy, but nothing's coming out yet. No rain, no hail. No rain, no hail. It's just getting really windy out here, and the temperature dropped all of a sudden. All right. Would and you it looks like it's heading south right now. Well, in, in a situation like this, Dick, what, what he's seeing, of course, yep. is the swirling motion of a yep. thunderstorm. You can't tell which direction the whole right. system it, is it going. Right, and uh, that, uh, that But you, you see no funnel right now. Not yet. Okay, just keep watching for us, would okay. you? Okay. It's interesting. Now that the heaviest activity appears to be, uh, uh, again, uh, in southeastern Anoka County, in northern Washington County, and in southwestern Chisago County, and it seems to be all connected in one front. And as you indicated in your conversation with Mike Lynch, it's not moving very fast at all. It seems to have almost stalled. Yes. And then we have another system to the rear in northern Anoka County, right on the border, uh, that appears to be uh, an afterthought of the, of the main front. So this is all moving, as Mike uh, Lynch indicated, to the east-northeast, but not moving very rapidly. Now, it was moving at 20 miles an hour, but I, I dare say it slowed down from that point. It's a great time for it to happen right at rush hour. Obviously, people can't get places. We're hoping to hear from our reporter, Jan Urock, who is going to the areas of possible damage. Property damage is the only indication we have so far. The, uh, and Bruce Hagevik is also on the way. We heard from uh, secondhand from helicopter pilots and or airplane pilots who said they had seen ground damage in the Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center, uh, those areas. Not We haven't got it pinned down as yet. But we do know that funnels were on the ground, at least one and probably two, for about a half an hour between 10 minutes and 5 
and about 520. Well, the good news at this point, Dick, is we've had no indication of any uh, uh, of any injuries or, or fatalities. And uh, at this time, as you know, in storms like this, we would normally be getting some reports of, uh, of activities in that area. And maybe even though we did not have the warning that we're used to in the metropolitan Twin Cities with regard to this storm because of the way it developed, uh, maybe we got lucky. We're still warning people about possible tornadic activity in the northern Twin City suburbs, Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center, Coon Rapids, Fridley, Moundsview, Columbia Heights, New Brighton, the North Oaks, Oaks Lino Lakes, that's right, Arden Hills, the places we're looking at on radar right now, although we know of no funnels at the moment on the ground, are in those areas. Here's another listener calling in. Hello. Hi. Go ahead. What can you see? Well... Above the apartment complex here, the clouds were whipping around like they were going to start another tornado. Where is the apartment complex you're speaking 73rd of? 73rd Avenue North. 73rd and what? Uh, Zane. Is and well close to that area. That'll be uh, Brooklyn Park again. That's right. Yeah. Darn near where it started, 85th and Zane. Yeah, just we're just a little bit from there. At one time, there was three of them out here, and we watched one go up and down and picking stuff up about just a couple miles all over by the Brookdale Shopping Center. Three funnels? Uh, yeah, they were in a scattered area. And you actually saw three separate funnels. Yep. And they were all they were all touching down. Uh, one for sure was the other two just looked like they were staying right there. Just hanging from the sky, more or less. Yeah, and the other one from our area was over towards the Brookdale Shopping Center, and that one was going up and down. It may have been further away, but that's the direction from here. We appreciate the report. Okay. Dean Spratt, you've got something. Well, Dick, I can give you some ideas of uh, the kinds of damage we're talking. We have very skippy damage in uh, a couple, three areas. The 85th and uh, Zane area uh, is where there has been damage reported. Also, uh, up along uh, 85th and uh, Evergreen, the 8500 block of Evergreen, and that's in the uh, Fridley uh, Spring Park area. Apparently, it's skipped along a bit. There are trees down. There are some houses missing roofs. There are some houses, in fact, in that Fridley area that are... Uh, pretty well destroyed, but it's not continuous damage. There's a home or two damaged, maybe uh, several, maybe half a block, a block skipped, then another home or two damaged. So it did uh, bounce up and down off the ground. The freeways, 94 in that area, still cars on the shoulders of the road that are parked and uh, people, I think, just watching and stunned. We had reports of vehicles being uh, uh, momentarily picked up as they were driving along the highway. Uh, we have no reports of injuries, although we do have numerous Numerous reports of, uh, in the 85th and Zane area, a truck uh, uh, that a gentleman was driving that was simply picked up and dumped on its side, uh, and uh, lots of these kinds of reports. It also sounds like there may have been some damage up in the Coon Rapids area, but the two major areas of damage that we're getting indications on right now are uh, around the 85th and Zane area and uh, around the 8500 block of Evergreen, which is not too far from the uh, Northtown Shopping Center, the area of University and Highway 10. And in fact, uh, they did report that some debris did fall into the lots and into the area of the Northtown Shopping Center, but no damage and no injuries at Northtown Shopping Center. And I would stress that we have had no injuries at this time reported anywhere, even those people in vehicles that were damaged. Yeah, we uh, talked to some people on the road that right. actually got blown off the road and nobody was hurt. Right, but, and uh, nobody was hurt. Now, as to the report, uh, the lady saying she saw three uh, funnels, I was monitoring an aircraft aloft in the area at the time, well, and he said yeah. that at, yeah, at well, one point uh, that he was observing four separate funnels, although only the one was on the ground and the others were in the air. But so that kind of corresponds with what the lady was saying. Yeah, Dick? apparently there were yeah, Mike Lynch funnels. apparently has some information. Mike? I got something here, Dick. A guy in Osseo said it's really churning up there. What's going on in Osseo, uh, sir? Okay, right You're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, looking for my house, which is actually right on the corner of Maple Grove and Osseo. Yeah, it looks like it's on. directly south uh, east of us here, and boy, it is just churning. And uh, can you see a funnel? Ground, or it doesn't look like a tornado at, at present. Oh, and you, yeah, but it's really churning there on Osseo. Is that it? All right, thank you. Yeah, Mike Lynch. Yeah, and uh, just to back that up, we've had a report now. I should mention, we do have a new tornado warning out now for portions of the Twin Cities until 620. It's for northeastern Hennepin uh, from that area yeah, where that gentleman ahead. was talking from, southern Anoka County, Ramsey County, particularly northern Ramsey County and northern Washington County. This tornado warning in effect until 620. This uh, severe thunderstorm still could produce tornadoes. In fact, radar is indicating possible tornado formation around the Brooklyn Park Osseo area, just where we heard from that gentleman, and there 
could be some more tornado formation right now in northern Ramsey County around the White Bear Lake area. Again, this uh, batch of thunderstorms uh, appears to be moving towards the east-northeast. The heaviest activity appears to be in southeastern Anoka County, northern Ramsey County, some of the northern suburbs of St. Paul like White Bear Lake and Nor North Oaks, and the activity also sticks back westward into just a small portion of northeastern Hennepin County around Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center. And Mike, then the, uh, we've, got a, yeah. we've got a guy in St. Paul that's sure. looking back toward it coming on. All right. Uh, the gentleman in St. Paul, hello? 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 You lost him. I, I think we him. lost him. Uh, right. Dick, I have a, a fellow here that told me that in Spring Rake Park right now, he's in his basement, oh. and he says it's terribly windy, it's raining real hard, and it's blowing, and he's in his basement, and he's uh, very concerned. That's Spring Lake Park at 83rd and Highway 65. They've got some really inclement weather there at the moment. Okay. And that pretty much jives with what we're seeing on the radar picture. Uh, in fact, now some very he heavy activity extending from southeastern Anoka County through the Fridley, Spring, Le Spring Lake Park, and Coon Rapids area to the Brooklyn Center, Brooklyn Park, and Osseo areas of uh, northeastern Hennepin County. And this activity also extends, needless to say, across northern Washington County, southern Chicago County, and it's continuing to move very slowly towards the east-southeast. And along with the tornado threat, there's going to be some large hail, uh, some locally heavy rains, and some uh, strong surface winds Let's as well. Let's try that St. Paul gentleman again. Are you with us, sir? Yes, I am. Yeah, and uh, where are you in St. Paul? I am uh, not too far from the capital. Okay. Can you tell us what you see? Well, I'm looking out towards... Uh, towards uh, uh, Jackson Street down there. All right. And out farther, I can see seen a cloud come down, a funnel come, come down. How long ago? About about five minutes ago. But could you tell how far away from you it is? I'd say it's about, uh, about 10 miles away. And you're looking uh, more like northwest, huh? Yes. Okay. You really couldn't pin it down any further than that. Ten miles from you would be um, outside of St. Paul, uh, up into the suburbs somewhere. Well, it's coming down this way. Heading your direction? Yes. Okay, keep your eyes on it for us, will you, sir? Yeah, the, the, the cumulus clouds are coming in, moving in real fast. Okay. And it's real still around here. Uh, Dick, I had a call from a lady in a diner, 50th in France. She said uh, that we haven't said anything about whether or not she is affected. And I think we should tell them we're in a tornado warning here. And it's not only out in uh, northeastern, the northeastern part of the cities, but uh, you also have to be aware, if you're in a diner or anywhere, that we are in a tornado warning. That's right. But right now, they're talking right. about eastern Hennepin, southern Anoka, portions of Ramsey and Washington counties, where it's visible on radar and where the uh, ground spotters are seeing it. The rest of the Minneapolis-St. Paul area seems to be right now uh, just... Uh, not even have any rain. Yeah, but again, Steve is you, totally you right. Anybody could, in the metropolitan sure. area with a system like this around should be on guard, uh, be ready to, to move uh, if, if, ne if need be, because the, sy the system can spawn uh, additional funnels. And they can be on the back side. The gentleman in Ramsey County, we can now see that the uh, heavy rain has moved down into northern Ramsey County. Uh, moved in the last few minutes uh, quite noticeably into Ramsey County, where before it was above. The, the main activity now seems to be on the Ramsey County, Anoka County line, the northern uh, part of Ramsey County, into Washington County. All of northern Washington County is now involved, as is most of Chisago County to the north. That's right. And the, uh, the warning itself is in effect for those counties that Rich just mentioned. If you're in these counties, be prepared to take cover. The eastern portion of Hennepin County, southern Anoka, the northern portion of Ramsey County, and the northern portion of Washington County, and a great portion of Chisago County. That's what we're watching on radar at the moment, and uh, we're counting upon our ground spotters to uh, see if they, if just rain and hail turns into a funnel. Sometimes it's difficult to see these funnels when it's really coming down heavy. The system appears to have regenerated quite, uh, quite heavily, almost in place in the last uh, 10 minutes or so. Yeah, 20 minutes ago it was breaking into little pieces, and now it's back into a big glob again. That, <laughs> that's a funny way to put it, but that's what it looks like on radar, and the pulsations continue. We have a weather emergency. The only damage reports we have so far are in the vicinity of 85th and Zane in Brooklyn Park and 85th and Evergreen in the Fridley Spring Lake Park area. The damage we heard of appeared to be rather minimal. Some roofs, some trees down, some cars rolled over. We have no reports of any injuries, no reports of any fatalities. Some of the damage to homes were basically roofs. One helicopter pilot, unconfirmed, said he saw houses flattened 
but we don't have that confirmed as yet. All right, Dick. If you are in White Bear Lake, North Oaks, Moundsview, Lino Lakes, uh, Coon Rapids, uh, say Forest Lake, Scandia, uh, Lindstrom Center City, Stillwater, any of those areas, we have some information that you should be acting on right now. Cole, can we have the instructions? If you see a tornado approaching, you must take quick action to protect yourself. In your home, stay away from windows. Go to a shelter or to the corner of the basement toward the tornado. Avoid an area of the basement directly below heavy appliances upstairs. Take a battery-operated radio and flashlight with you. If you have no basement, crawl under heavy furniture in the center of your house. In your mobile home, go to a designated shelter area. In your car, drive away from the tornado at right angles. If caught outdoors, get into a ditch. Stay away from overhead wires. Stay tuned to WCCO Radio. It is exactly 6 o'clock. This is WCCO, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And in case you're wondering, we are under a tornado warning for a large portion of the northern and northeastern section of the metropolitan area until 6.20. That's another 20 minutes from now. You there, Corey? Uh, tornadoes have been reported on the ground. They have been spotted on the ground. Damage has been done in north and northeastern portions of the Twin Cities metropolitan area. Corey, are you there in Fridley? Yes, I am. Hello, yes. What can you see? Well, I was in Fridley. We had just left from there about 15 minutes ago, and it touched down across the parking lot from where we were. We watched it uh, tear quite a few trees up, and it moved a dumpster into one car. 15 minutes ago? Yeah, about 15, 20 minutes ago. And exactly where was that location? I was on 83rd and Main Street. 83rd in and Main? warehouses and okay, that's two in... new construction buildings right across the way from us, and it ripped the roof off of one of the new construction buildings pretty good. 83rd and Main in Fridley? Right. 15 minutes ago? Yeah. Okay, and it's gone now? It's Yeah, uh... it, 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 it rained for a little bit, and it took off, and it, still got, it was still a little dark, but I haven't... And I left from there, and I'm over in, in St. Paul now, and it looks good over here. You drove at right angles to the funnel, <laughs> more or less, huh? Yeah, I, I must have followed it or went away from it or something, but it, it's gone. Okay. okay, I can uh, allay some fears of some parents, Dick. Moundsview Park and Rex's uh, kids that are on the tubing trip are safe at the Coon Rapids. Uh, I don't know what that is, but they are safe. So any, anybody in the Moundsview area in the Park and Rec Department, the tubing trip, if you have a child there... Relax, they're okay. Rich, I've got a young woman that just called me from University Avenue, a couple of blocks from Egret. They had had a funnel cloud over their building, but now she said the sun is shining there and it's all clear, and she says it's amazing that it could seem so nice after they were so frightened earlier. But that's at Egret and a couple of blocks from University Northeast where the sun is now shining and it's clear. We have another gentleman who's been watching some funnel clouds forming. Is that right, sir? Can you hear me? Yes, I do. Where are you now? On Venice Heights, right off of 35E. Okay. Are there's you still still looking at it? There's one just a walk inside my apartment now. There's about three or four of them that formed. They went right back up in the clouds again. And yeah. the way the clouds are, to me, they're coming probably due east. They're, if they come fast enough, they're going to come right around 694 due east. Okay, 694 and about what? Oh, I'd say, you know, 65, which is central out there in Fridley, and they're headed due east. They pop down to pretty good size, and they form back up going to clouds again, and they're heading due east, and it, it looks like we might get it pretty doggone soon the way they're forming up. Okay, they haven't touched the ground yet. Not, nothing yet, but they come down, it's just almost like they ain't got enough power. Okay, you haven't got any rain or hail or anything like that? We had a lot of big uh, winds come up, and all of a sudden it slowed down when the trees weren't moving or nothing, and all of a sudden the trees started blowing like crazy, and then it quit again, and that's when the tornado started forming, and then they went back on the clouds. All right, you're speaking from Venice Heights. Venice Heights, Way Bear Lake, right on 694 due east. Okay, right now there's nothing touching the ground. Not as far as I know right now, but there's a possibility. I'd say the way they're going on right now, I wouldn't be a bit surprised by quarter after six. Can you hang on, sir? Sure. Uh, you'll be able to listen, but uh, we'll get right back to you. All right. Okay, Dick, I've figured out the handwriting now. Uh, our news director, Kurt Beckman, writes like I do. Oh, it's not my writing. Oh, it's not your writing. Okay, you're not guilty. Uh, the Moundsview parents that have the children on the uh, Park and Rec's tubing trip, they are okay, and they're at the Coon Rapids Menard store. So just relax. Okay, in the meantime, remember, Eastern Hennepin, Southern Anoka, Ramsey, Washington, Chisago counties are all in a heavy weather situation right now and under tornado warning. We have had funnels touching the ground at the moment. We know of no tornadic activity occurring at the moment, but people have seen them 
drop from the clouds and return to the clouds without touching the ground. We do know that there have been touchdowns. We do know that there has been damage. The damage so far seems to have been rather minimal. We have no reports of any fatalities or injuries. We do have one. Uh, there's one report being circulated, Dick, and I can't say where it is, but we do have uh, reports of uh, one person being struck by lightning in, in conjunction with this storm. We don't know if it was a, a serious injury, a fatality, or what, but there are reports that there has been at least one injury. Our radar indication, again, starts to break up a little bit. The, uh, the pulsating throbs that we receive over our radar signal... Uh, break up and then conglomerate again. And it seems like, uh, as Mike said, there's about a half an hour regeneration period in these storms. And we're hoping that the next half hour doesn't John. bring some more funnels. We have a, another caller now John. named John calling in. John, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Where are you from? I'm at Brooklyn Park, 9324 West River Road. Okay, what can you see? Well, I about 20 minutes ago, the uh, tornado came across Riverview School I watched it come about 100 yards into my yard, and I grabbed the dog and ran for the basement. And it uh, it must have knocked down 12 trees, I suppose, on my property and my neighbor's property. And it sounded like a freight train. I was I thought the whole house was going to go. Did you have any house damage? Uh, very little, but I've got an oak tree that's hanging over my deck that's split right in half, and it could come down on the deck, I'm sure. Okay. How about any power lines down, anything like that? Uh, there are... No, I think uh, not right next door or at my property everything seems to be operating and how long ago did this happen probably 20 minutes ago or so okay i think that's uh, one that we had a report from the fellow in vanity's heights who was looking in that direction too dick yes that could be it uh, it went right across the river and just turned that river into a sea dick i have a fellow in brooklyn park who says there's a funnel cloud above his head right now at 85th and zane why don't we get him on the air here uh which line is that i got him right here okay. sir are you there in brooklyn park Hello. Brooklyn Park, 85th and Zane. Yes, we lost him, Dick. Okay. Something else we haven't mentioned, Unless, unless we got him over here. Let's see, is this uh, Brooklyn Park? No. Something we should, should mention in a situation like this, I'm sure we have uh, power outages uh, throughout this affected area, and people should be on the alert for downed wires. That's true, uh, yes. If, uh, if you uh, run across the wires, of course, stay away from them. And if you're in your automobile when you encounter a downed wire, stay in your car. Let's see Do not we, get out of the car. Let's see. We st uh, is, is the gentleman from Vadnais Heights still with us? Yes, I am. Yeah. Uh, what can you see now, sir? My wife just came in from the back there, and she says, out by Waper Lake, it's getting dark coming south to us on Vadnais Heights. And there's a lot of clouds forming, and the wind is picking up really something else out here. And you said it was heading towards 694 and 65. Yeah, right. That's what I saw in the first place. But she said it's moved east, where the clouds are more or less taking and getting really black. Mm-hmm. And if you have enough wind, I suppose they'd probably end up turning itself into something. Yeah, a few minutes ago, you were talking about funnels that you could see that would drop down a little bit and not touch the ground and then return up. Right. Have you seen any more of that activity? Not yet, no. That's good news. I know that's true. Okay. Right. You're, you're in a safe position, though, aren't you? Oh, yeah. You seem to be in a pretty good vantage point. Will you still hang on with us for a while? Oh, okay. I right, thank you. Yeah. Oh, boy, Rich. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Where do you yeah. go from here? Yeah, we, we look at... Well, we don't go anywhere. By the way, the, way the storm is, uh, it just is not moving, it, uh, we stay right where we are. And that is uh, under a tornado warning for a lot of communities in the northern and northwestern suburbs of the Twin Cities, including uh, southern Anoka County and eastern Anoka County, virtually all of northern Washington County, portions of eastern Hennepin County, and northern Ramsey County. Uh, this system that has produced a number of funnel clouds that have touched down and done some damage uh, doesn't want to leave us. It's sitting right there. Uh, it is now uh, picking up steam, or it seems to be picking up steam again on the radar, and it is virtually moving nowhere. Uh, maybe we could get Mike Lynch back in here pretty soon to talk about that. The fact that uh, the system was moving to the east-northeast at about 20 miles per hour, well, that isn't, hasn't been the case for the last 30 minutes or so. It's been right over us, and that's where it's staying. Developed over central and northern Hennepin County, started to move out to the east northeast, increased in intensity, and it's right there. Mike, uh, can you yeah, come in here? I, sure I, can. I was making the observation that this storm isn't going anywhere. Well, you're right, and it's right, and in, in, in it's at the same time, it's not quite right because the storms appear to be moving towards the east at about 20 to 30 miles an hour. That part is right, but what we're seeing is that the storms are regenerating to the rear. And this oftentimes happens when you get severe weather. Uh, it appeared like the activity was pretty much over with in uh, extreme southern Anoka County and into northeastern uh, Hennepin County, but then it regenerated on the rear side of the existing.
breeding cells. And right now, uh, most of the activity, as you said, seems to still be in, or at least the back edge, still uh, seems to be into uh, eastern Anoka, northern Ramsey, and uh, maybe a small portion of extreme northeastern Hennepin County around Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center. And again, some very act- heavy activity in northern Washington County, southern Chisago County. And we might also add some pretty heavy weather with some locally heavy rainfalls and some other severe weather possible right now over sections of uh, western Polk County of Wisconsin and the northwestern side of St. Croix County of Wisconsin. And we should add that the backside of this storm where the redevelopment has been going on is just as dangerous as the front side. Absolutely. In fact, many times, as we've indicated several times, that if you have a tornado formation, it usually comes at the rear end of the storm. And so just because it looks like things might be clearing up a little bit, it doesn't mean you're out of the danger. Tornadoes tend to uh, form on the rear side or the west and southwest sides of these thunderstorms. And right now, the southwest side of the present cells we're watching is moving through extreme southern Anoka County around the Fridley Coon Rapids area, as well as sections of uh, northern Ramsey County, some of the northern suburbs of St. Paul, like White Bear Lake and North, North Oaks, and also sections of eastern Anoka County around uh, Lionel Lake, Centerville, and uh, Ham Lake, those areas. Mike, I think uh, we have uh, somewhere to go. Bruce okay. Hargovic is on the line, I believe. Bruce, are you with us? Yes, uh, I'm on Highway 10, uh, just entering Coon Rapids here, and uh, this is near the Northtown Shopping Center, and uh, as I came up 65 and uh, turned on to 10 west here, uh, it was raining very heavily, no, and uh, the rain has now stopped as I entered Coon Rapids, but I can see that we do have uh, some a uh, little bit of urban flooding in the parts of Spring Lake Park in Coon Rapids as a result of the very heavy rain. I haven't seen any damage of any kind, but certainly a lot of heavy rain. And I can also see a little bit of blue sky uh, kind of to the southwest here. Uh, so the rain is stopping right now in Coon Rapids. Bruce, you might want to listen to this. We've got a damage report from Dan Anderson. Dan, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, what do you know? Well, we were, uh, we're at 85th and Noble. Uh, basically, this is, I think, where the tornado actually started, and we watched it here from our building and from our roof for about a half an hour. We drove up into the uh, that new uh, golf course area, uh, Edinburgh, and some new homes uh, construction up in there. I know Kirby Puckett's building a home up in there, and there's probably six or seven or eight homes that have uh, some sub- uh, substantial damage. Uh, roofs are partially torn off, and then it started raining, so water is going in. We saw a light truck that had been actually turned upside yeah, down, CCO, anything new and the number those? of new homes that are partially built, uh, walls were flattened, and uh, uh, you know roofs caved in, and, and so forth. You said that's around 85th and Noble. Right, it's a new uh, housing section where that new uh, golf course is going in, also Edinburgh. Okay, you don't know of any injuries. Uh, I don't believe there was any. We were around the area for quite a bit, talking to some of the uh, contractors, Andreen and Anderson, and uh, doesn't seem to be any any uh, injuries. I appreciate your report. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Right. It is 12 minutes past 6 o'clock. Our Twin City temperature is, well, the last temperature we had was 91 degrees, but I'm sure the temperature is changing all over the Twin Cities area. They've, we've had reports of tremendous temperature drops in the vicinity of the thunderclouds and in the vicinity of the tornado funnels. And as we've tried to pin down, the damage that we know of is basically in the Brooklyn Park area. 85th and Zane, 85th and Evergreen, which would be over in the Fridley, and the recent report, 85th and Noble. Still no reports of any injuries or fatalities. Dick, I don't think that we've had any extension of the tornado warning as far as Wisconsin is concerned, but the the system now, uh, as we see, is moving across the border into Wisconsin, which would be Polk and, and I believe, St. Croix counties. So people in that area, while we have not had any official warning for you at this point that I'm aware of, uh, should be watching uh, the situation as it develops and be ready to possibly take some action. As far as we can see on our radar here, it's not moving that fast. No, but the front, <laughs> the leading George edge Wisconsin. has moved through Chisago County and is now into Wisconsin. And to the south in Washington County, we also have the leading, uh, the leading edge of the rain, at least, uh, moving into uh, the, the, the uh, neighboring Wisconsin County. That would be, I think, Polk County. Well, wait a minute. I'm, I'm not sure of that uh, until I get a map out well, here. Well, Polk but... is one of the two counties that are affected. I believe St. Croix is the other. That's right. The tornado warning remains in effect for eastern Hennepin, southern Anoka, Ramsey, Washington, Chisago, those counties, and now moving into adjoining Wisconsin. Still no reports of any injuries or fatalities, and that's the only good news we have. And the damage reports we have are basically roofs, trees, some automobiles. What do we have? We have about uh, seven minutes left in the uh, tornado warning that, that was extended for the Twin Cities metropolitan area, those counties we mentioned, eastern Hennepin, uh, northern Ramsey, southern Anoka, northern Washington, and southern and maybe central Chisago. Uh, that warning is due to expire at 620, but as is the case many times, uh, that may be extended depending upon what this system is doing and, and where it's doing it. We have uh, activity redeveloping on the backside of the system, which would put it in the... Uh, eastern Hennepin County area, and northern Ramsey County. People in that area should uh, should be careful that they don't relax too soon. 
And we have uh, Bruce Hagavik, as you heard, and Jan Yurok is also in the field, and we hope to be able to bring you some more specific damage reports in the very near future. I suppose if you want to try to pick up some more information, I could try to get some other news in here quickly, and uh, we'll try to stay abreast of the developing storm situation as it comes. Why don't we do that? It is 14 minutes past 6, and here is some other news in our region right now. The woman who says, uh, first, we have one more storm report. Hang on, let's take this first. Hello, who's this? This is Dowdy Robertson from Blaine. Blaine, what can you see there? Um, I was curling, I don't, I didn't really look out my window, I was curling my hair, and, um, I just had gotten done, and all of a sudden I heard a big boom, and sparks came out of my curling iron, so I ran into the living room, and there was a big hole in there, in the living room, in our living room. Was it a, a big hole in the ceiling? Yeah. Was it lightning? It must have been. Yeah, lightning struck a house, and then there's a big, there's a chip off our chimney. You weren't hurt? And... You were not hurt? No, we are not hurt. We went to the neighbor. Okay, and again, your location? Blaine. Blaine. Okay, I'm sorry about the hole in your roof. Okay, thanks. Uh, what's your name again? Jody Robertson. Jody Robertson. Thank you for calling. You're welcome. Right. Okay, Dick, I'm told uh, we can delay the other news a little bit longer here. We have Jan Yurok in the WCC Radio Mobile Unit. Jan, uh, where are you and what uh, what conditions are you encountering? Rich and Dick, uh, we are in the neighborhood of 35W and County Road I. That's... Uh, Oh, sort of between White Bear Lake, Roseville, and uh, Moundsview. And what's, what we are seeing up here is a very heavy rainfall. We haven't seen any hail up here on the way up or while we're here. We haven't seen any damage, and we have not seen any disruption in the traffic. It's a little bit slow, of course, but uh, so far I'd have to say that we haven't seen any damage at all. It's kind of weird. We haven't had any... any uh storm, any weather to speak of in the downtown metropolitan Minneapolis area, while all of this stuff has been skipping by on the north. And uh, we have we saw a little bit of lightning, but we haven't seen any clouds that look even remotely like a funnel cloud. Well, the system has uh, weakened somewhat in the last few minutes, and this is probably uh, partially, you know, why, why you're seeing what you're seeing. Uh, keep searching, and we'll get back to you. Okay. Mike, Mike Lynch, is it dying down? Yes, it is. In fact, I just talked to the National Weather Service radar operator, and I should qualify that. It's dying down around uh, sections of uh, southeastern Anoka County and northern Ramsey County, although some still pretty good rain cells in that area. But I can tell you with uh, a lot of certainty now that the activity is really wound down over sections of the uh, Fridley area, the Coon Rapids area, and around northeastern Hennepin County. Doppler radar from the Weather Service not showing any uh, turbulent activity in that area, just maybe a few light rain showers, but still some pretty hot cells in uh, northern Ramsey County where Jan is right now, Jan Urick. And, uh, but again, no reports of any uh, turbulent or possible tornadic activity at this time. The cells appear to at least ha uh, temporarily have weakened over northern Ramsey and southern Anoka County. We're still keeping an eye on, eye on them, though, because they could just easily regenerate up here in the next uh, 15 minutes or so. It appears, though, that the heaviest activity that we're seeing on radar it appears to be up in uh, northeastern Anoka County around the Linwood uh, Columbus Township areas and also in uh, northern Washington County around Forest Lake and some very heavy thunderstorms right now around sections of southern Chisago County around the center city Lindstrom area. But it appears that at least as far as uh, Doppler radar indications that uh, activity seems to be winding down across southeastern Anoka County and northern Ramsey County. Still a lot of heavy rainfall in the area. Could be some surfaced winds and some pretty good hail and lightning. Now the stuff that's moving into Wisconsin, which county is that? Polk okay, county? it's in Polk County right now, western Polk County. I don't have, okay, we have some cities that would be involved. Uh, St. Croix Falls, Wisconsin, Balsam Lake, uh, Clear Lake, Wisconsin, any place really in uh, eastern or, I'm excuse me, western uh, Polk County of Wisconsin, and it looks like the northeastern corner of St. Croix County of Wisconsin, that would be the area just to the uh, west of New Richmond and possibly into the New Richmond area before too long. Okay, thank you, Michael. Sure. Uh, let me squeeze in some more quick news here briefly, and then we'll try to update you on the storm as it progresses. The woman who says she was raped by three former University of Minnesota basketball players took the stand in Madison, Wisconsin again today. She testified that she may have been looking for attention before the alleged incident, and she admitted that she deliberately cut her arm. When defense attorney Philip Resnick, representing Mitchell Lee, asked her if people had been paying attention to her in the last six months, the woman said, too much, and began crying. Court was recessed for a brief time. Then prosecutor Judith Hawley asked the woman whether she enjoyed talking with police about the alleged rape. The woman said she did not, and said she felt belittled, scared, angry, embarrassed. The woman also said she mixed up the names of defendants Mitch Lee and Kevin Smith several times when she talked to police after the alleged rape. 
but she said she was exhausted when she talked to police and did not read a transcript of the interview. The defendants have pleaded not guilty to charges of first-degree sexual assault. They say the woman consented to the acts. Millionaire businessman Wheelock Whitney says he's backing George Latimer in his DFL primary challenge of Governor Perpich. Whitney was the unsuccessful Republican candidate against Perpich in 1982. This time, he says Latimer and not Perpich would be easier for Republicans to beat in the general election. WCCO's Eric Eskeler reports from the Capitol. Whitney is included on a list of 50 Republicans and independents who backed George Latimer's DFL challenge of Governor Perpich. Latimer was upbeat as he made the announcement. It's probably the largest breakthrough of this campaign since it began last December. But Whitney has more on his mind than backing Latimer for governor. Whitney does say he likes and respects Latimer and thinks Latimer would do better in office than Perpich. He calls the governor inept, inconsistent, and inarticulate. Whitney says he's committed to Latimer only through the September primary, then expects to vote for the Republican candidate for governor, either Cal Ludeman or Jim Lindau. Whitney says he's backing Latimer as the best way to defeat Rudy Perpich. I don't think that uh, Jim Lindau uh, or Cal Ludeman would have much of a chance against Rudy Perpich in the general election. I think that George Latimer has a much more vulnerable ticket. I think it's a ticket that will do well in the primary because of the nature of the, the heavy metropolitan focus. But I think if that same ticket had to be exposed to the general electorate in November, I think it's vulnerable. And uh, so... I think maybe I could help either Ludeman or Lindau uh, to some extent if I'm successful in helping George Latimer win the primary. Perpich, alluding to his 1982 defeat of Whitney, says you never get ahead by trying to get even. Wheelock Whitney probably is, uh, you know, I'm sure that he'll write out a big check for Latimer and that'll help. But other than that, I don't think it makes any difference. I mean, if you can't do it yourself, why can you do it for someone else? Sources say Whitney has given Latimer a sizable amount of money and has promised to double the amount by primary day, September 9th. Eric Escola, WCCO Radio News at the Capitol. The storm situation seems to have let up a little bit for the time being, but Ramsey County Commissioner Dwayne McCarty has some information on a, a buckled section of pavement on I-35W, which has caused rerouting, and on two men struck by lightning. Commissioner McCarty. Yes, Dick. Uh, it has been reported to me by the Emergency Services Center uh, for Ramsey County that there has been a concrete upheaval due to the heat more so than the storm at 35W on Little Canada Road. Therefore, there has been a rerouting at that section. And it is true, the lightning strike in White Bear involved two men on a boat. And uh, my uh, latest reports have been that they are at uh, Ramsey Hospital, St. Paul Ramsey Medical Center, and that they are uh, okay, that their they're, they're men are in satisfactory condition. I just wish to add my, my heartfelt thank you to w WCCO and the, and the tremendous service, the public service that you, you folks have uh, always uh, given to our area in these situations. I'm finding in conversations with my neighbors and around that the reason they're not hearing warning sirens is because many of them are shut up with air conditioning, and the sirens at this time are not loud enough to warn those people who are inside, and WCCO has, taken, has filled that void. So I do thank you very much. Uh, another job well done. We're clearing out here, and from my vantage point here at my home, it looks pretty good now. Commissioner McCarty, thank you. That's what we're here for. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thanks for the report. Eric Eskel is on the scene in, I think, White Bear Lake. Eric? Well, on 694, uh, heading uh, west. Brooklyn Park, I beg your pardon. Yeah, Brooklyn Park. We're heading west. Uh, uh, eastbound 694 is very badly blocked around the Shingle Creek Parkway with a series of, it seems, unrelated accidents. There, uh, it's... Uh, Overcast now with the sun peeking through the clouds at this point, but I think we've come in the aftermath of a heavy rain. There's some standing uh, water on the freeway in some low-lying areas, and there have been a series of accidents. And so traffic is moving very slowly on 694 eastbound, right in the area of the uh, Shingle Creek Parkway. We're going to be heading over to that housing development and see if we can, that was reported on earlier, and we're going to see if we can uh, pick up any reports of damage, and when we do, we'll get back to you. People are going to wonder how you got from the state capitol to Brooklyn Park so quick. Oh, it's the magic of radio. <laughs> right. Thanks for the report, Eric. Uh, one more story. Fearful that Chicago gang members have put out a death warrant on convicted murderer John Scruggs. Authorities have moved the alleged Minneapolis gang leader from Stillwater State Prison to the high security prison at Oak Park Heights. Police say Scruggs, convicted last week of ordering the murder of 16-year-old Christine Kreitz last fall, may be targeted by leaders of the Disciple Street Gang in Chicago because allegedly he took control of the gang in Minneapolis without permission. Scruggs was sentenced to a life term following the conviction. Rich? 
Well, Dick, I, I was just going to suggest that we might bring Mike Lynch in here pretty soon. We have a situation where four minutes past the expiration time on this tornado warning. Mike, uh, is there any indication whether they're going to extend this or let it expire? I have had no indication yet from the Weather Service other than what I told you just a few minutes ago. Uh, according to their Doppler radar at the Weather Service, they're not noticing any real turbulent activity in these uh, turbulent activity in these cells right now over uh, northern Ramsey and southeastern Anoka County. It just peer, appears now to be just uh, garden variety, generic showers and thunderstorms uh, with some uh, heavy rain, some hail, and some gusty winds. It appears like most of the really he heavy activity it may have moved on a little bit further to the east and to the north across uh, some sections of northern Washington County uh, around the possibly the uh, Stillwater area or just a little bit to the north of that. Some heavy thunderstorms as well right now over southern Chisago County around Lindstrom and Center City and an especially large batch of some showers and thunderstorms right now in western Polk County from about uh, St. Croix Falls, Wisconsin, northward to the Luck and the, to the uh, Frederick area. It appears to all be moving towards the east-northeast. It appears in general like things are winding down here in the Twin Cities. And when we talk about the Twin Cities, really the only areas being affected right now are some of the northern and eastern suburbs. And, and again, I want to underline it appears things are settling down, but there's still a chance that in the next 20 minutes or so, some of these thunderstorms uh, now in southeastern uh, Anoka County or northern Ramsey County could regenerate again. But it does appear that overall that things are winding down. Oh, okay. Let's let's go okay. to Dick. Dick, you have somebody from Civil Defense on the line? Yes, we have Bruce Wojak, who's the Civil De Defense Director in Anoka County. Bruce? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, well, uh, as of just a couple minutes ago, and I uh, was in Central Communications, kind of our headquarters for the county that handles police, fire, and medical, uh, we did a quick check with them. There seems to uh, be very few personal injuries at this time and uh, possibly just uh, more damage to... Uh, trees and minor damages to homes. We haven't uh, done a complete survey, but talking with the uh, local uh, departments in the major cities here, that, that's the indication in the report that we get back, and that's the uh, current right up to uh, right now. So uh, no major injuries that we're aware of, uh, possibly one you're, fire you're as a result of it. One fire as a result? Yeah, that we think that might be a result of it that that's, was just dispatched a short while ago. But uh, otherwise, uh, in, again, we would get all medical calls coming through here, and we've had very, very few. When, when you, see, uh, you say very few personal injuries, what yeah. kind of injuries? Uh, well, anything broken that limbs? Or? Yeah, anything that required an ambulance call uh, or, or a medical response from one of the fire departments. Uh, they were... Uh, uh, they said they just haven't been getting them at this point in time. Okay, your, your communications uh, deals entirely now with Anoka County. Cor correct, entire, all the municipalities in Anoka County. Okay, friendly. some, more, some of the da reason I asked that, some of the damage seems to be south of Anoka County, you know, in uh, further down in Brooklyn Park and places like that. Correct, correct, very definitely. I appreciate the report. I just thought I'd let you know. You bet. Bruce Bye. Wojak, Civil Defense Director in Anoka County. Thank you. Well, Dick, uh, we still have the activity in the Twin Cities, and uh, as Mike Lynch indicated, there's still a possibility of some trouble, so we'll hang with it. We'll do some sports with Steve Cannon in just a moment, but let me just uh, throw this in. We've kind of ignored our outstate friends a little bit by necessity here, but we do have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 7 o'clock uh, for southwestern, uh, the southwestern portion of Minnesota that includes northeastern Lincoln, northern Lyon, and the, it includes the cities of Marshall, Minneota, and Ghent. That's for another 32 minutes, a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for people in those areas. And we're watching weather in uh, Polk County, Wisconsin, adjoining uh, Minnesota. Uh, towns like uh, Balsam Lake, St. Croix Falls, places like that. The activity is moving in there now, but we have no indications of any tornado funnels there. Just some severe thunderstorms at the moment. Bruce Hagovic is back with us. Where are you, Bruce? Uh, Dick, uh, we uh, are now at 85th and East River Road in Coon Rapids, which I think is kind of a center of uh, where much of the damage, whatever damage did occur from this today, uh, happened. And I uh, have with me a couple of gentlemen. First of all, Chris Hampton. And uh, Chris is an employee of Northwestern Bell. And I don't have all the details. We'll get it from him. But, Chris, I understand that you were in your maintenance truck, the telephone maintenance truck, uh, when this uh, tornado hit. And tell us what happened. Well, basically the van just got picked up by the tornado and flipped over onto the highway. Now, where were you traveling at the time? I pulled over into the ditch. I wasn't traveling at all on the road. Okay, so th this was on East River Road then? Right. So uh, maybe you can describe for us, try to relive exactly what happened in some detail here. Well, the twister hit the truck. It picked it up, moved it over a few feet in the air, and then rolled it over a few times. How many times do you think it rolled over? Probably rolled over at least once on each side. Now, did you see the uh, the funnel of the tornado coming before this happened? I was working right in the area when I, when I saw it coming, and I went into the truck. Do you think that 
the, that you were right in the funnel when the truck was over? I was right in the funnel. What did it look like? I wasn't looking too much. <laughs> <laughs> I just made sure that seatbelt was on and went for the ride, sir. <laughs> and what did it sound like? It sounded like a train. Quite a bit like a train going through. You know, it's still quite a bit of a Doppler effect as it, as it passed. Okay, Chris, and, and we also have Owen Shelton. And Owen, uh, yeah, thank you, Chris. And Owen uh, lives uh, right near the center of where this, uh, the, the destruction was. And maybe he can help us assess uh, just exactly how much uh, damage there was here. Owen, you live uh, approximately where here? Well, I live right at the corner of 84th and East River Road. And I saw the funnel past the house just about three, 400 feet north of behind my lot there, right at the point the telephone truck. I watched him go by, and the next thing I know, he was in the intersection. And it had actually crossed behind us and then angled towards the houses. And it done quite a bit of uh, tree damage and some house damage in our block right there. Saw Chris's truck roll over in the, in the I, I did not actually see the truck roll over. I turned my head the other way and I didn't quite see it. Okay, now you saw the funnel. Uh, maybe you can describe again in detail what exactly you saw. Well, we saw the funnel as it come across, came across uh, from Brooklyn Center. It was high in the sky and it looked like it was just reaching down a little ways. But actually, it uh, broke apart, and there was another, the more, the bigger funnel was below it on the ground. And we saw garbage and trash and everything flying, and we figured, well, it's going to come this way. And it looked like it was going to go north of us, about, oh, quarter mile or farther north of us. And actually, it changed directions and headed in a more southerly direction and came across right at 85th and East River Road here and then headed south. Now, once it touched down, how long would you say it was on the ground? Well, actually, I think it was pretty much on the ground all the way from across the river because uh, we could see garbage and trash flying all the way from where we watched over the trees. We could see trash and garbage flying in the air, actually, uh, soon after we spotted the original tornado. Now, you're familiar with the neighborhood, obviously. Uh, how many homes do you think received some kind of share? Oh, I would imagine there's... Uh, Somewhere between 25 and 50 homes have some damage, a lot of tree damage. Uh, I did not see a lot of house damage. I saw a garage that was damaged and some house damage, but nothing real extensive. So no homes really actually destroyed, but some peripheral damage. Not, not that I have seen. I now, haven't. now your home, uh, I see, saw had some damage, at least to its garage. Yeah, we got some sheeting off the end of the garage there and a few shingles off and a few windows and rearranged the trees around quite a bit. Okay. Bruce? Yes, Dick. Bruce, we might be able to clear up some of that damage report. We have a gentleman from the 85th and Noble Territory, Mark Lind. Mark, are you with us? Yeah, I am. Uh, that's where we had an earlier report, some new housing development there with some damage. What can you tell us? Well, I drove through. I'm calling from my car phone. I drove through the new uh, golf course area, and up around 87th in between Noble and Xerxes, there's about four houses that got the roof off of it and stuff, and the fire department's there and everything, but they said nobody was hurt and there's no fire or anything, but they really got the area blocked off and a lot of traffic's up there. That's 85th and Noble, 87th, around in there, huh? Yeah, up in the new development. You're speaking from your car now? Yeah, I oh, just car. drove through it just now. There's only one uh, news person out there, and that's WTCN 11 or whatever. They're the only ones out there. We'll get our guys over there right away. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yep, bye. That report from 85th and Noble, Mark Lind, where some new housing development in the vicinity of the new golf course was uh, reported earlier. Dick, we have Mike Lynch back. Uh, yes. Is this to do with the uh, the warning for yes. western Wisconsin? Right. Well, we do have some new warnings and add some additional information here as well. Uh, new tornado warning in effect until 720 for extreme eastern and southern Chisago County. Western Polk County, Wisconsin, uh, looks like portions of Barron County and sections of Rusk County in Wisconsin. This would include some uh, cities like uh, St. Croix Falls, uh, Barron, uh, Ladies Smith, Wisconsin, and also in uh, Chisago County, the Center City area, and also too, uh, the warnings extend for that area until 7:20. We've had no re no more reports of tornado touchdowns in that area, but obviously these cells have had a history of producing tornadoes, and so we're watching them very carefully.